Today's video is going to be a fun one because it is all about you guys on day 12 of the 12 days of financiary and if you don't know what that is i'll put the playlist right up here i asked you guys for your frugal tips and habits on my previous videos my subscribers had left the most amazing tips i have learned so much from you guys and you have actually made me laugh a lot it is very interesting to see what other people do to save money or that they've grown up with being frugal from you know even other countries. I have enjoyed it a lot. I asked you guys to leave your frugal tips and habits down below of that video and you guys came through for me. I have a lot of tips. I have so many tips that I'm gonna have to do at least two of these videos. I'm gonna do 25 of my subscribers frugal tips in just this video. But before we get started, my name is Jennifer. If you are new here, I make videos on saving money through being frugal and implementing minimalism. I'm also documenting our journey to paying off our mortgage by the year of 2025 and just ultimately being financially independent. So if any of that interests you, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Number one is from Kathleen, and I've got these all written down here, so I'm gonna read these. Kathleen says to use half the amount of laundry detergent as recommended. It still gets your clothes clean. <laughs> Nobody ever thought about that, right? I mean, how dirty are your clothes actually? Probably not that dirty. And you know, the laundry detergent company probably has an interest in you using up that laundry detergent quicker than not, so. I think Kathleen is on to something here. Number two is Selena and she made me laugh. Let me read you what she said. She's been going on walks every day during 2020 when obviously gyms were closed, etc. She has found $42 in random change and $52 in cash just laying on the ground. Now, we all need to know where Selena lives and I'll tell you why. Because there's obviously a few people in the neighborhood who also walk with her who have holes in their pockets because that is a lot of money to find that much change or cash. She said she is getting paid to exercise. That is for sure. That is a lot of money. I mean, I may find a nickel or a dime here or there, but $42 in change, that's a lot of coins. Number three is from Amy, and I literally, when I wrote this down, I put it in capital letters. I loved this saying. If you keep this in mind, it will save you money. That's what she says. 90% of your grief is from the stuff you buy. It's either broken, the wrong size, poor quality, too pricey, hard to keep clean, expensive to maintain, get scratched, or is hard to get rid of. Number four is from either Terry or Terry. It's T-E-R-E. -E. And Terry grew up in the Soviet Union and snacking did not exist outside of the home. It is okay to not eat. This is what the comment said. It is okay to not eat until you get back home. Food tastes so much better on an empty stomach. If you have to eat something, a banana and apple work that you don't need packaging. I mean, yes, and when you start to think about that and you think about how lucky we are to be able to easily, every 10 steps, stop at a convenience store, a grocery store, a fast food restaurant if we're hungry, no matter what time of day or day it is, even on a holiday, we can get a snack if we're outside of the house. We forget about these other countries and places where other people grew up where they didn't have that. So what makes us think that we won't survive until we get home to get a snack? I mean, really. Number five is from Katie and it is something that I am going to do. I read this and I thought, yep, yep, I'm gonna do this. So again, you guys are teaching me things. I feel like, I feel like we're friends. That's not gonna be awkward, is it? I feel like we are friends. A lot of us talk in the comments. I, I recognize a lot of you. I enjoy you know, reading and hearing from you guys again. I never ever tire of it. So definitely keep, keep talking to me down in the comments. I love responding and hearing your thoughts on things. Getting back to number five with what Katie said. She buys a 36 pack of whitewash cloths 
and she keeps them in a cute container. She uses these instead of paper towels and has a used bucket. She washes them with bleach and hangs them dry in the sun. She replaces them every year and they cost about $3.96. So I'm going to try to find these and if I can find these or something similar to what she's talking about, I'm going to link those down below. So check down in the description box. But I love this idea and I think it would be so simple to put under the sink, just go to the dollar store and get two different containers, one container and then, a, a, you know, for the clean rags and then one container for the dirty rags. Some of you may already do this, but it would be so much nicer and quick and convenient, you know, just under the sink rather than, you know, buying those paper towels that's not, one, not that great for the environment and two, it does cost a lot of money over time. Number six is from Carrie. She's thinking. She says, keep savings accounts in a separate bank and better yet, across town. Yeah, I actually need to do this because I have my, and a lot of you probably do, you have like your checking account with your savings account and you know, if you're short one month then you might just go oop, boop, boop, you know, move over the money. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. I've done that. Number seven was from Desiree and she only uses the 20 minute wash cycle when washing her clothes. I never thought to do this. That thing runs, I don't even know how long it takes, 45 minutes or more? Same thing with the dryer. I mean, how much water and electricity is coming from just that? And if you did the 20 minute cycle, it's the same as before. The other tip about using half the laundry detergent, I mean, is it really necessary to wash something for that long? Obviously it's working for her, so I might try this. Number eight is from Hannah, Hannah, and she says, if she is tempted to buy something, she says this to herself, I have everything I need today. She also, if she wants, she may take a picture and think about it for a little while. She may look for it cheaper online or she may forget about it altogether. I think this is a great thing to remember, especially when you're out somewhere like at Target and there's so much fun stuff and they, They've done such a good job at trying to get you in there and buy things that you didn't go in there for. If you say this to your thing to yourself, I have everything I need today. And then if you really love it, just snap a picture of it. And then, you know, if you if you keep thinking about it, maybe go online and look for it. But if not, just delete it and realize that it was just in the moment that you felt that you needed that thing. Now keep in mind, some of these frugal habits may not be something that you could do and that is okay. These are awesome tips from my subscribers and the point of me telling you them is that maybe one, two or more of them will help you save money or be more frugal so that you can reach your goals faster. So. If don't take offense to any of these, if they are not for you, then let them be. Number nine is from Sadie. And I mentioned this in a previous video about creating a uniform for yourself. So you know these people who wear similar color palettes or a black t-shirt every single day. I think Matt Diavella on YouTube does the exact same thing. And I think he made a video that he wore the exact same shirt for 365 days. Sadie, what she mentioned was funny to me and it kind of, reiterated this uh reiterated this point but she says create a uniform she could not care less what her co-workers see her in 40 hours a week or 52 years or 52 years 42 hours a week or 52 weeks a year and some people have commented back on that and said well how do people not notice that you're wearing the exact same thing without being you know um overly People don't care. They are not paying attention to you. I promise. If unless your cold coat coals, unless your clothes have holes, dirty, you're showing a little bit too much cleavage, or you're showing your rear end, or they just are completely ill-fitting, falling off, or entirely too tight, nobody is noticing what you are wearing. In today's world, people are way more concerned about themselves and what you think of them. So if you create a wardrobe, and it doesn't all have to be black, right? Basically, if it's all, you know, a similar color, color palette and things that can go together, you don't need as much rather than having all these pieces that you can't blend with something else and they don't go with this or that. You know, I think it 
it creates a better aesthetic and there's plenty of studies that also talk about creating a uniform and creating something that's easy to select helps with the amount of energy you have through the day because you believe it or not exert energy when you're trying to figure out what it is that you want to wear to go out of the house i am not even going to try to say the name for number 10. i'm sure it's very easy but it's n-v-a-r-a-n-a-v-a-g-e so that person says, reuse paper grocery bags as wrapping paper and let kids decorate it. You probably thought about that. I wanna ask you a question. This brought back a memory for me. Back in the 80s and 90s, um, I remember having to use a paper bag as a book, like a textbook cover. Do you guys remember this? I always envied the other kids in school that had the, the stretchy ones, the nice ones that they would put, because you were required to put one of those on your textbooks then. But I remember specifically the grocery store would, during right, right before school started, they would have, their, their grocery bags would actually have a template for the book covers. <laughs> My mom, that's what I used for book covers. She, she cut it out the grocery bag from the week before his grocery shop and you know taped it on there and that's what I had to use for my textbook cover all year long so I mean I appreciate it now mom's probably laughing if she's watching this but I appreciate her frugalness now but to this person's point because I'm gonna say this person because I, again I can't pronounce the name um, that is a great idea just getting the paper grocery bags and you know letting kids put stickers on it or color it and use that as wrapping paper i would find that so much more special especially a grandparent i'm sure would love that number 11 is from deborah it's very simple and it's a saying so some of these are like tips and habits and weird things people do to save money and some are just things that they tell themselves to save money um and and this is one of them and this is great and this one could save bazillions of dollars and i could end my frugal series if people just believed this one so deborah's comment is your life's happiness cannot be bought in a store i mean is there anything else that needs to be said number 12 is from andrea and i i love this tip and i had not even thought about it but she adds milk she adds water to milk to make it go further and her kids have not even noticed. I mean, milk can get expensive, especially if you want to go with like an almond milk or a plant-based milk. And I don't know if that would taste, if that would be any different. But I mean, if you were still drinking cow's milk and you got a whole gallon of um, whole milk and you ha put half water in it, it would just create skim milk. So number 13 is from Joanne and she uses her Amazon Alexa feature to tell it what she needs on her grocery list. So every time that she comes up and opens up the last bottle of something, let's say she opens up a new shampoo, then she'll tell her Alexa that she needs that shampoo. This definitely saves you money because when you go to the store, you actually know what you actually need. I can't tell you how many, literally, so this happened this weekend, let me go into the, I said to my husband, we need, do we need cooking spray? Cause this one's getting low. He said. I don't think we have any. He went to Costco and bought two large things of cooking spray. He was putting them away in our extra storage area and guess what he found? Two large things of cooking spray. Point taken, if we had told Amazon Alexa what we needed on our list, we wouldn't have now four bottles. Number 14 is from Jessica. She makes leave-in conditioner by taking a spray bottle and filling it half with conditioner and half with water. I mean, it probably is actually what you buy with leave-in conditioner, right? Number 15 is from Marianne and she batch cooks. Now wait, don't, don't listen. I know, right? That's an obvious one, no. And then she freezes them in individual servings so that if she's going to work the next day, she will just pull out one serving the night before and take it with her. I mean. How many people have told you to batch cook and to create these big meals, but how willing are you to get out in the middle of the night or in the before you go to bed, pull it out, proportion it out and put it away? It's that's not gonna happen. So if you're convenience, you want convenience, it's gonna be a heck of a lot quicker if when you actually freeze it, you put it in individual portions. Number 16 is from Esther, and again, a light bulb moment when I actually felt kind of dumb when I read this, because it seems obvious, but I never thought about it. 
when you need to buy food containers, make sure the food containers are in the shapes of squares or rectangles because obviously they stack easier in the fridge or the freezer than round bowls who don't go together. I mean, I didn't think of that. Number 17 is from Vicky. She makes meals that the base can be used for other meals in the week. Her example was she uses pot roast or she makes pot roast and then she turns it into beef stew and then she turns it into pot pie or a shepherd's pie. I mean, that's three meals right there out of one base of meat. Number 18 is from Josiah's mom. She says, buy cars for cash from the city or county via auto auctions. So I've heard of this and I, I'm sure some of you may know too, but think about that because I bet some of them are really nice cars that have either maybe been repoed, impounded, or maybe were in some sort of criminal um, adventure and now are owned. I bet you get a good deal. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there's another YouTuber that maybe her husband did this as like a side job where he would buy cars um, from the auto auction and then clean them up real nice and sell them and make a profit. So it could be a cool little side hustle. Number 19 is from Barbara. She says, if you inadvertently get a late fee, call and ask for it to be waived. If it is not something that has happened before, you will most likely get it waived. And this is so true. This recently happened to us and I wanna talk about it more on our January update, but somehow I don't think we got the bill or the bank didn't send the payment. I don't know, but we are never late. So we called and we got the late fee for this utility taken off. Even if you've been late before, maybe there's been enough time and the company has a policy that they will waive another one, just give it a try. If, I mean, if you're nice, niceness gets a long way. Number 20 is from Elizabeth and I really like this one. She has a household to buy list. So for the household, anything that they want, they write on that list and they let it sit for a few weeks. She says many times by the end of the month, all, a lot of the items are crossed off. So I mean, I, this would definitely be great for small families, but I can see this being really great for big families. Having, you know, on your, your pin board, having a list here of things and, you know, marking them off as you realize you don't want them or you no longer need them. I think that's a great idea. Especially if your kid comes to you and says, well, I want this. Okay, well, you know the rule, put it on the board and we have to wait a few weeks. You know, this could be a really good way to teach your kids how to have patience. Number 21 is also something that when I read it, I went, light bulb moment, why haven't I tried this? Glenda says to run the dishwasher on the light mode, shorter amount of time, and it saves on hot water. I mean, most people pre-wash their dishes anyway, so it's not like you're just sticking stuff in. Now, if you do that, you know, you stick stuff in there with the food, okay, you might need like the strong one, but if you're like most people and you pre-rinse your dishes anyway, put that in there because that dishwasher can run for so long. Is it really necessary? Number 22, Carrie says, I really like this one as well. Read the recommended portion size on food packaging. Have you ever looked at the actual food, like the, the portion size, like you get a box of something, a box of pasta uh, mix, like the rice or or something, and it says four servings, but when you eat it, you end up like almost taking the whole thing for yourself or, or two. This could not only save you money because you'll have leftovers, but help you out because I've talked about this before, the portion size in America has literally doubled and tripled what it was 20 years ago. There are plenty of places you can get those actual facts. Read the proportion size and eat that. Saves money and may keep you alive longer. Number 23 and number 24 are both from Elizabeth. Number 23, she says, have, no, have one no spend day per week. Don't turn the lights on that day. Now, this one, I'm not sure. I mean, you could live by candlelight. I'm sure you could, you know, maybe roast a marshmallow or a hot dog or something by a candle. So maybe start out slow and like not charge anything, not run the dishwasher, not run the, um, the washing machine, not have a lot of lights on, maybe just use one lamp, not actually cook anything or make anything that you have to warm up, eat something cold, maybe eat by candlelight like they used to do. I mean, have you seen the new season of Outlander? It just came out. 
I've already watched it <laughs> and it's amazing. Number 24 is also from Elizabeth. She says she only goes grocery shopping one time per pay period. And I think this is genius. I've told you guys before that I think that the food bill is for most people, probably the highest household bill behind their mortgage. You, I think if you only go one time per, and that's your rule, you only go one time per pay period, then you're probably gonna be super intentional about what you buy. So especially if you're, you like only get paid once a month, you're gonna meal plan, you're gonna write down that list, you're gonna stretch things, you're gonna get to the end of the month and say, nope, that's my rule, that's my plan. And I think you're really probably gonna save a lot of money on this tip. And number 25, to end part one of my subscribers frugal tips and habits comes from Linda. She says she has an over the air antenna for local channels to get the news. So she doesn't have cable or satellite or anything. And we do the same. So we cut cable and satellite years ago. We still have Netflix and we have Amazon Prime, but we also have an antenna and they, they don't look like the spaceship, you know, back in the day that we had and you had to pull it all the way out and keep moving it around to try to get the right signal. Does anybody remember that? Um, I also remember hitting the TV. We had a black and white TV because you remember the ants going across? I thought they were ants, but it was, you know, the fuzz when you couldn't get the channel. Sorry, I digress again. But um, we, they look really sleek now. You can't even tell they're like, uh, they can be the same color as the TV and they're really thin. They just sit on top of the TV. And we got ours from either Walmart or Target and it's a 50 mile, um, pick up and we aren't in a city per se so it actually does very very well we get all of our local news stations and we get you get some really cool tv shows that you wouldn't think about so you probably get some Andy Griffith some um old Nickelodeon some um I Love Lucy, stuff like that you can pick up. So you never know what you might pick up on your antenna. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing some of my subscribers' frugal tips and habits. I hope you got out of it as much as I did. I learned a lot and I'm super excited to go ahead and implement some of these. Don't forget, I am gonna do a part two. So if you've got any other fun, quirky tips or habits that you use, make sure you put those down below. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. It really helps out my channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you back for more videos.